As soon as you have a program that runs in more than one thread, there comes a point that you need to communicate from one thread to another. Basically, the situation arises where one thread produces data to be used by the other thread. That second thread needs to be able to wait for the data to be ready and to be notified when it does become ready. There are some methods that you can use to do just this. As you know, every class in Java inherits all the methods from the object class. The object class defines the methods named wait, notify, and notify all, so every object has these methods defined in it. To communicate between two objects, you designate one object as the monitor. The object needing the data calls the wait method of the monitor object. The object producing the data calls the notify method of the object to notify the waiter. Here's an example. The five count class is the one that contains the data generated by the producer. It runs a thread, so the main method just creates the five count object and starts it running in its own thread. In the constructor of the five count object, a producer object is constructed. Notice that the reference to the current five count object is passed to the constructor. That's because the five count object itself is going to be used as the monitor object. Anyway, the producer is started running in its own thread. The run method of the five count object calls the show value method in an infinite loop. This is the method to receive and display the produced data. A call is made to the wait method of the current object. Remember, the current object is the monitor. A couple of things here. The wait call is done inside a try block because it's not going to return until there is notification. So it can be interrupted just like the sleep method and could throw an interrupted exception. Also, notice the show value method is synchronized. That's because the wait method can only be called from synchronized code. It can be in a synchronized method like this or in a block of synchronized code. Anyway, when the wait method finally returns, it makes a call to the get value method of the producer to return the value and then it's displayed. This is the class that produces the data. The constructor accepts an object to be the monitor and stores it in a local reference. This is the run method of the thread. It's an infinite loop and pauses for five seconds, then calls send value. This is the method that's executed once each five seconds. The value is incremented by five and a call is made to the notify method of the monitor. This causes the wait method of the consumer to return and its processing continues. And when its process does continue, a call is made to this, the get value method, and the current value is then returned to that caller. Okay, that's it. Let me mention a couple of things. There is a notify all method also. You could have a number of processes that have called the wait on the same monitor. Now this is the call to notify and it will notify the oldest of the calls to wait. You could call another method named notify all and it would cause all the wait method calls to return. Also notice that the call to notify is made inside a synchronized block of code. That's a requirement. All these methods, wait, notify, and notify all, must be made from inside a synchronized block of code. When this program runs, it displays the value as it's being made ready by the producer and displayed again by the consumer as it is retrieved. And here it is. Now, there's a lot going on here. If this is the first time you've seen this sort of thing, you're probably confused as to just what is happening and when. And that's okay. It takes a bit of study to get this straight. I made the example as simple as possible, but it still sort of folds back in on top of itself. If you're confused, let me make a suggestion. Go back through this movie a time or two until you get some idea of what's happening. Then take the example program and change it. Try to use another object for the monitor. Try adding another data consumer. After you fiddle with it a bit, you should get it straight. 
The objectives of the certification exam state that you may be required to write code to do this.